Today, I wanna to take you through how I went from 2.4 watts per kilo up to three watts per kilo, and then what I learned from this most recent ramp test that I'm gonna implement into my training to help me get me towards my goal of four watts per kilo. So let's jump in and join in the fun uh, as we watch me suffer uh, through this FTP test. So as you can see here, I'm going through the ramp test and the beautiful thing about a ramp test is it starts so easy and really there's only like three to five minutes of like gritty work. The rest of it is all right because basically you're warming yourself up to that top intensity. But how you warm yourself up to that top intensity really sets the precedent for how hard you can push at the top. And these are some of the things that I've come across. So before I really start to suffer in this ramp test, let's go through four points that I've come to realize that help me go from 2.4 watts all the way up to three watts per kilo. First point has to be body weight. Obviously, as you get lighter and your power increases, hopefully, your watts per kilo, so your weight to power ratio is going to increase. So it means you're essentially gonna get more out of the bike and more out of the power by just being lighter. But it's not as easy as just losing the weight because you still need to increase your efficiency and your strength and your power on the bike to make sure that as you do drop weight, you're not losing power as well. You're still improving and getting stronger on the bike. But at the same time, the bigger you are, it can also be quite a really good thing because you essentially have access to more power to put behind the pedals. So especially being a bigger athlete sitting around that 99 kilo mark means that I should technically be able to put a fair amount of weight behind the pedals to help me reach some real high power. The problem is those high powers normally only last for a short amount of time. So in a ramp test, I have to sit around a set power for a full minute and this can be challenging, which is the whole point of the ramp test. Now, even though this point didn't help me with this test because my last test I did I was 99 kilos and this test I did I was 99 kilos so I was the same body weight but I increased a fair amount of power so that means technically I have got better over this period of time but the reason I bring this point up is because I know over the next 12 weeks my weight is going to significantly drop and I plan to be around that 95 to 96 kilo mark. So a good couple of kilos off, which means if my power increases as well, my power to weight ratio will be something that I'm pretty happy with. So point number two on what kind of helped me get from 2.4 to three watts per kilo is consistency in my training. Now it sounds really obvious, but before the new year, I was maybe getting in one cycle a week because I was prepping for a powerlifting competition. So my cycling was on a bit of a maintenance mode. So the bike was there to just tick over and just enjoy and kind of build a base ready for me to start building upon in the new year. Now, while I was in maintenance mode, that one cycle a week was getting me by. But then after my powerlifting meet, which is at the start of December, so around mid-December, I started to up the ante a bit and I got up to two cycles a week. And now I'm up to three cycles a week. And those three cycles in include one high intensity session, one steady zone two style session, and one long bike ride, which is normally followed up by a run as I'm prepping for a half Ironman. So when I last did a ramp test, it was about 1st of October last year when I got my new Wahoo Kicker direct drive uh, turbo trainer. So because I got that, I thought might as well get some ballpark numbers to kind of see where I'm at, set a benchmark and know how I can look to build upon over the foreseeable. And then it coming to the new year and I was going to do another one, but I, I just never got round to it for whatever reason. And because I'm now 12 weeks out from my first half Ironman, I thought, you know what, this is a good time to kind of get some new benchmarks, get some new numbers so I can make sure that the last 12 weeks of training is really specific to where I'm currently at. So my first test back in October, I hit 242 watts, which is then around 2.44 watts per kilo. And then this time around, I got myself all the way up to 303, I think it was, or 306 watts, which is then 3.06 watts per kilo. So I'm gonna take that 06, so I'm over three watts per kilo. Now, even though the FTP or ramp test isn't necessary to kind of show improvement, it's a nice thing to do to get some new benchmark numbers to make sure that all of your program workouts are based off of your current state rather than what you was back then. So if I was basing everything off of my performances back in October, I've got more consistent in my cycling. I'm doing, so I'm doing a lot more sessions a week. I'm fitter than I was back then. I've had more experience back on the trainer now. 
And that was a big part of it, being able to suffer and have that understanding of when to kind of sit into that discomfort, sit into that pain. Back in October, I didn't have that. I, did, I just couldn't push through and give that extra bit. Now this experience was gained through varying training sessions. So what do I mean by that? So that means doing things like having varying cadences, different intensities, so really high intensity, some steady state stuff, some low gear work at low cadences. So changing up the styles of cycling, not just cycling at one power or one effort and giving me a essentially wider base to build upon to make sure that I can really put out some effort when it comes to tests like the ramp test. So point number three has to be vary your cadences in your training session so you're not just always cycling at your comfortable cadence, whether that's a late 70s or maybe 80, 90 RPM. For me, I like to sit around the 85 to 95 RPM. So it keeps it relatively fast. It keeps the legs spinning out. It keeps it a lot more aerobic. And that is definitely something that I feel I need to improve upon. So it's a really nice place for me to kind of be pushing. However, just because I might need to improve upon my aerobic system, I still need to do my strength work. Just like in my resistance training, I still need to do my low cadence, heavy gear work so that I'm really pushing through around that 50 50 RPM, 60 RPM, so nice steady stuff, really grinding through those gears. Being able to access that part of my energy system means when it comes to say doing races, I can get up climbs better because I'm more comfortable pushing through at slower cadences. But what it's also going to help is when I get to these later steps in the ramp test, I have the ability to really grind through when I can't keep my cadence high. Now as part of this low cadence work, I mean to make sure I include plenty of base training. So that's my zone two stuff. So point number four that helped me get from that 2.4 to three watts per kilo, I made sure I included plenty of zone two work. So I was doing plenty of steady bike rides at varying cadences. So I was taking in consideration point number three, where I said about varying cadences, and point number two, I was consistent. Now it's so important to include your zone two work because your zone two work is going to help you build that aerobic base. Because remember, the bigger the foundations, the bigger the base you're gonna be able to produce power from. The way I like to think of it is, think of it like a pyramid. The wider the base, the higher the peak can be. We wanna be more like an Egyptian pyramid rather than a Roman column, because Roman columns are thin, they're tall, but I've got tiny bases. So you're gonna be limited on how high they can actually be before they just fail. Whereas with a pyramid, you can go as high as as wide that your base is. So to put that into cycling terms, the bigger my aerobic base becomes, the better I can cycle oxygen around my body, which means I'll be able to provide more oxygen to my muscles, which means I can keep a lower level of lactate, which means I'll be able to push for more intensity for longer because I've built all that aerobic fitness. So now, as you can see here in the ramp test, I'm getting very close to my failure point. I'm hitting that 380 watt round and things are starting to become pretty tough and I know I'm having to dig deep. Now going through these final few minutes, I wanted to address the things that I would change in my next ramp test to help me get more out of it. Because obviously I've gone through the points that I've already addressed from how I went from 2.4 to three. So that was reducing body weight, consistency in training, varying my cadence work, and also making sure I'm doing plenty of base building aerobic work. That got me to three, but now how am I gonna go from three to four? What am I going to change? So reviewing this ramp test really made some things clear that maybe I didn't action as well as I probably should have. So the first point is I didn't utilize those lower cadences. So all that training that I'd done prior so all those weeks leading up to this ramp test, I'd done plenty of low cadence work, really grinding out some efforts. I didn't utilize any of that energy system in the ramp test. So even though it helped me produce the power and kind of got me towards the last part where I needed to get to in this ramp test to get me to three watts per kilo, as you'll kind of see, my cadence was sitting around that 85 mark, maybe even closer up to that 90 mark for most of the ramp test. And then as soon as I hit my failure point, I pretty much went from about like 80-ish, 85 to zero. I didn't think about grinding out and really pushing through those final bits of efforts. And because I didn't have that as a mindset going into it, I didn't even think of that as an option. So in my next ramp test, I wanna make sure I've got that as an option in the back of my mind. So when my cadence starts to drop, I know I can keep pushing, I can keep grinding out through those final few minutes. 
The second thing I would probably change in my next ramp test is I wouldn't put a cap on it. In my mind, I worked out what I needed to hit to hit three watts per kilo. I know I had to finish the 400 watt round. So because I had that in the back of my mind, all I said to myself was just get to that round and get through it. And when I looked at Zwift and I saw I had 20 seconds left, suddenly this pain just went through my body because I knew I was near the end. And knowing that I was near the end, my body was just like, I can hold on as much as I can, but I'm gonna give up. And because that mindset was already starting to boil up inside of me, by the 10 second left point, I was like, this is excruciating. I can't take this anymore. And as soon as I went past that minute mark, I just pretty much just started to come to a stop. Now, was that my fitness? Probably, it's just where my fitness currently is at the moment and my skills on the bike. But maybe going in with the mindset of, let's see how far I can push, rather let's just get to this round. I reckon I might be able to push out more time in that 420 watt round. So let's jump into the session and see how I finish out this ramp test. <sighs> So in summary guys, I hope today's video has given you maybe some insights into how to maybe get more out of your next FTP or ramp test. Remember I said about drop in body weight. Remember, as your body weight comes down, your power to weight ratio will improve as long as your power does still keep going up. Remember, being consistent in those sessions means you're really going to give your body the fundamentals to make sure that you can push the limits rather than just doing ad hoc bike sessions here and there. Make sure you're getting plenty of high intensity work and the low intensity work. And obviously don't forget about your cadence work. Make sure you're varying your cadences. You're doing low and slow gear work, but you're also doing some high aerobic work. So the legs are spinning nice and fast. Don't just sit at your comfortable cadence and not vary it up or down from there. And then lastly, don't forget do your zone two work. So build up those base miles, build up your bike fitness. Because when it comes to then your performance on the ramp test, it's really gonna help you access those gains. And then learn from my mistake and don't put a limit on the round that you wanna get to. Obviously have a benchmark of where you wanna have as a minimum, but don't put a ceiling on it. Say I wanna get to at least the round of whatever watts, so for me, I should have said, I want to get to at least around the 400 watts and I want to see how far I can push rather than having the narrative on my head, get to the end of the 400 watt round. This then become a limiting belief and stopped me really pushing beyond what I might have been able to achieve. So as part of all this triathlon training, I'm really starting to learn new things. Coming from a strength background, this is all quite new to me. So hopefully I'm able to get this stuff across to you. Now, I found out a load of new stuff with running that really helped me improve my running. So I made a video, which you can see here, that'll take you to my five easy steps to make running easier for you. I'd really appreciate if you liked the video, and obviously if you're looking to join me on this journey of mine into this world of hybrid training, where I do strength and endurance, be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you in that next video.